Sita working as a facilitator in Fortune Butterfly Senior Secondary School. This session will be mainly on work, energy and power which is related to grade 9. Actually, in our daily life, we heard the terms work, energy and power. Let us take few examples where we heard these words. When a farmer is working in the fields and when a farmer is ploughing the field, we can say that the work is done. As well as when a student is studying for the exams or else when a student is playing cricket or when a construction worker is carrying loads or the bricks etc. In physics, however, the work covers a definite and precise meaning. Let us know more about this. Let us consider an object on which constant force F is acting. The object undergoes displacement D. So when an object is there and a constant force F is acting on that object, it undergoes displacement D. So here the work done is given by the formula force into displacement. So already you know that the SI unit of force is Newton and SI unit of displacement is meter. So we can say that SI unit of work is Newton meter. Another name for this Newton meter is Joule. So we can say that Joule is also the SI unit of work. Already we know that force means mass into acceleration. The SI unit of mass is kilograms and the SI unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So by substituting these values in this we can get force is kilogram meter per second square and the unit of displacement is meters. So by multiplying these two values, we got the SI unit of force as kilogram meter square per second square. So here the SI unit of work is Newton meter or else joule or else kg meter square per second square. So here we learned that Work done is the product of force and displacement. SI unit of work is Newton meter or else joule or else kg meter square per second square. And I want to ask you one thing when is work done zero? Already we know that the formula for work done is equal to force into displacement. So my question is when is work done zero? So if force is zero, if you multiply that with the displacement, then the work done will be zero. That is one situation. That means when force is equal to zero, then work done is equal to zero. Let us take an example for this one. An object is moving on a smooth surface where no external force is applied. But it underwent some displacement and it moved to some distance. In that case, we can say that the force is zero because no external force is applied on that. So here, the work done is equal to zero into displacement. So here the work done will be zero if you multiply these two. Okay. In another case, when the displacement is zero, then the work done will be zero. So, in this case, I want to give a few more examples. So, when will be the displacement zero? Let us take the first example. A person is pushing the wall. Though he is applying his 100% force, the wall will not move. That means the wall is stable. So, in this case, he applied the force the displacement is zero because the wall is not moving. So hence the work done is equal to zero because 
work done is equal to force into displacement. If you apply this one, so work done is equal to force into zero. So here in this case, work done will be zero. Let us take one more example. If a person is moving in a circular motion, if a person is moving in a circular motion, his initial point and the final point is same. That means if you take the difference of these two positions, that means wherever he started and after completing his circular motion, he reached to the same point again. That means initial position of this person is equal to the final position of this person. That means displacement is equal to final position minus initial position. So which is equal to 0. In this case also the work done is equal to 0. One more case. If a person is moving along a straight path, horizontal path. Let us take this path as A and B. A person started from point A and reached point B, then again he came to the same point. He started at point A and went to point B, then again reached point A. That means here also the displacement is equal to 0. Then the work done here is also equal to 0. These three are the cases. So when is work done 0? Either the force must be 0 or else the displacement must be 0. Then the work done will be 0. Now let us know about energy. What is meant by energy? Energy means nothing but the capacity to do work or else the ability to do work. The capacity to do work for 10 hours or 15 hours of a day is called as energy. So nothing but the stamina. So here in this case energy is equal to work. Hence here the SI unit of work is joule. So the SI unit of energy is also joule. Energy is divided into two types by virtue of its motion and by virtue of its position. So when an object is moving, we can say that it is having kinetic energy. When an object is at rest, with respect to its rest, it has some energy. So we call it as potential energy. So whenever an object has energy with respect to its motion, we call that energy as kinetic energy. And when an object possesses energy with respect to its position, that means which is at rest, we call it as potential energy. The formula for kinetic energy is half mv square. The formula for potential energy is mgh. Let us take an example of potential energy. Now I am standing. I can say that I possess potential energy. If I start moving, then I can say that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So a moving object possesses kinetic energy. Let me give me an example of potential energy. Have you seen a bow? In that bow, a string is stretched. The stretched string of a bow possesses potential energy. The structured string of a bow possesses potential energy. An arrow flies off to a greater distance when it is released. So here we can say that the structured string is consisting of potential energy and when an arrow is released from this, it flies off to a greater distance. So here the potential energy acted on that arrow. 
One more example to this potential energy is our Earth's crust. Our Earth's crust is not at all uniform, but has discontinuities and also dislocations. Am I right? So here, these discontinuities and dislocations are called as faults. So these faults are like compressed springs. So these are consisting of potential energy. Just now I said, I am standing and I possess potential energy. If I start moving, I have kinetic energy. So an object has capacity of holding both potential energy as well as kinetic energy. Whatever the object it may be, it can possess both potential energy as well as kinetic energy. The combination of this potential energy and kinetic energy is called as total mechanical energy. So this total mechanical energy is constant. Here this total mechanical energy is constant which is neither created nor destroyed. The energies are of different forms. Maybe it is a potential energy or it's a kinetic energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, light energy, whatever the energy it may be. But so these energies are neither created nor destroyed but can be converted from one form to the another form. So this is also called as law of conservation of energy. So here I want to give you an example which is related to this one. Let us consider an object which is freely falling and it is the starting position of this object and this is the middle position and this is the ending position of this object. So already I told you that each and every object has the capacity to hold both potential energy and also the kinetic energy. So here if you have to find the uh, answer for the questions like you have to find the total mechanical energy of an object at three points or else kinetic energy or else potential energy of an object at a different different points. So this will be helpful for you. So already I am saying that the object is freely falling. That means the object is at rest now and this is the ground level. If I release this ball it falls down. Initially it won't have any energy and because of its Position it has some energy. So we call it as potential energy. So initially the object has only the potential energy. So we can uh, say like this. So total mechanical energy at this position if I ask potential energy plus kinetic energy. But here in this case the object is at rest. It is not containing the kinetic energy. So only the potential energy it is having. And if you want to know the energy at point B. Object just started from its rest position, it transformed its potential energy to kinetic energy. So here the object at B will have both potential energy and kinetic energy. So here the object not reached the ground, it is about to reach. So at this position the object contains only the kinetic energy but not the potential energy because it is not at rest, it is moving. So it contains only the kinetic energy. So here, you, if you have to find the energy at point A, then it is only the potential energy which is given by the formula mgh and if you want to know the energy at position B, then you have to use this formula mgh plus half mv square and if you have to find the energy at point c of an object then you have to use the formula half mv square. Let me give you some examples which are related to this energy and I told you already energy is neither created nor destroyed. It can be transformed from one form to another form. For example, if I am standing and possess potential energy and if I start moving, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. In the same way, if I switch on the fan, then the electrical energy will convert into mechanical energy and the fan runs. In the same way, if I switch on the light, the electrical energy converts into light energy and also the light burns heat. Yes or no? 
it is both the light energy as well as heat energy let us know about the topic power what is meant by power power means nothing but the rate of work done so power means not only the work done but the rate of work done let us take an example if a person is physically fit he not only climbs the four floors of a building but also climbs faster so here power is equal to work done by time the unit of power is what the si unit of power is what it is named after the scientist james watt so here the si unit of work done is joule and the si unit of time is second si unit of power is watt so 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second watt can be defined as 1 joule of work done in 1 second so power is defined as rate of work done that means power is equal to work done by time SI unit of power is watt and SI unit of work done is joule. SI unit of time is second. So by this, watt is defined as one joule of work done in one second. So watt means joule per second. So what is meant by one kilo water? Now we came to know what is what. What means joule per second, or else the amount of work done, the one joule of work done in one second. But what is meant by one kilo watt hour? What is meant by one kilo watt hour? So let me tell you. If you are using hundred watt bulb, and if you are using it for ten hours, so then we can say that you used. One kilo watt hours. When you use one kilo watt hours, if you are using hundred watt bulb for ten hours, then we can say that you used one kilo watt hours. So, if you want to convert this one kilo watt hour into joule, how to convert? Or else, if you want to say one kilo watt hour in joules, how to say? Let us know this one. One kilo watt hour. Kilo means nothing but thousand. So thousand watt hour. Hour means nothing but sixty minutes. So if I convert this sixty minutes into seconds, I can write it as sixty into sixty seconds. Right. So now. Thousand can be written as ten cube watt seconds into six six or thirty six zero zero. That means ten cube into three thousand six hundred watt seconds. Another form also you can write it. So you can write like this: ten cube into three point six into ten cube watt seconds, which is also Written as three point six into ten power six watt seconds means nothing but joules. So how this watt second became joule here? So already we wrote that one watt is equal to joule per second. So by doing the conversions, so send this second this side one watt second is equal to one joule. This I wrote in this one. So one kilo watt hour means 3.6 into 10 power 6 joules. So there is one more unit for power, which is horsepower. So you can measure this power in two units. So one is watt, and one is horsepower, which is usually represented as Hp. So the SI unit of power is equal to Watt or else horsepower. One horsepower is equal to seven forty six watts.